Welcome to Scrutinize My System. For this episode, we will be looking into the first system released to the public with the title, Microsoft Windows. The year was 1985. Microsoft had already been busy trying to get their hands on all aspects of technology and were largely successful due in part of their aggressive marketing campaign. A new market has been pioneered by Xerox and Apple, consisting of a graphical user interface for controlling the operating system of their machines. Apple specifically was pushing their Macintosh line to be easy to use, and although they thought they were the first ones to market a GUI to the public, competitors were already in the market in a bid to take over. Microsoft, being Microsoft, wanted in on this cash grab. They assembled a team to work on a DOS shell to mimic the user interface on the more popular Macintosh system software. Internal quarrels would follow, as the product was delayed repeatedly from a lack of progress. Fingers were pointed, with Bill Gates once again doing the vast majority of the blaming. The final result? The system known only as Microsoft Windows. It was primitive. It was lacking. It was notorious for being incompatible. None of that mattered, because they had a system they could market. And market they did. Bill Gates would go on to pat himself on the back as his financial investments towards marketing nudged his interface gradually towards the top of the market, despite being grossly inferior. This would be the next step at Microsoft's Monopoly. Okay, so before we continue, I want to make two disclaimers, and I'll try to make this quick. First disclaimer, Microsoft Windows 1 is a not an operating system. It is, in fact, sitting on top of an existing operating system as a shell, and said operating system is DOS, whether it's MS-DOS or PC-DOS. Um, as long as it's version 2 or 3, if it's a later version, it will typically crash, unless the later version reports as it's a window or a DOS version 3 it's kind of messy and you have to do some editing in the back end but uh, we're sh we're primarily focused on Windows right now versus DOS so um, that's the first disclaimer the second disclaimer is that this is the most unstable Windows version that I've ever attempted to use so expect a lot of crashes in this video so I'm gonna rush this part first off we need to install DOS so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I rebooted the system just to make sure that it's up and running. So let's go ahead and boot up Microsoft Windows. That's right, we got to be in the directory real quick. So first off, let's change this to the Windows directory. And there we are. So now you see here that this is Microsoft Windows. Let me go ahead and we're going to adjust this real quick. Okay, now you can see the full screen. Now let's make sure that everything is up and running. So we do have mouse support, which I was actually surprised because my previous attempts um, mouse support wasn't exactly supported, but I did get the IBM PS2 version. So it, um, this emulator does is able to emulate uh, PS2 mouses, so I do have a working mouse here. So with that said, let's just go through the basics here. We got uh, writes, which is basically like um, WordPad in the future, but uh, this is all it really does. Um, You've got a couple of formatting ca uh, capabilities. You can bold, italic, underline, blah, 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 blah. Very basic, very primitive. And I can't say it looks cosmetically... Um, excuse me. I can't say it's cosmetically pleasing. It's very black and white. Now, in theory, this system does support color. Um, I just didn't get the chance to install that because I, care, I guess there's a, a special driver you got to have in order for uh, uh, Windows 1 to have uh, color. So this is basically it. It's just about, it's pretty ugly. It's pretty primitive. Um, it's usually pretty unstable. This The fact that it's still running like this is actually impressive because in my, in my experience, I've had very 
bad luck with this thing screeching and causing problems. If I if I can get bloopers on this thing, I will at the end of this. Um, but it's usually pretty. It's almost as unstable as Bill Gates himself. But uh, that's near the here or there. It looks like there's a couple of files in here where the um, a lot of these are just text files. Um, you know, they're trying to say, oh, look, you can prioritize your list. You get, you can have priority A, B, C. But it's it's really just a text file. I mean, it's blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to save this. But, yeah, in the very beginning of Microsoft Windows, there there was um, there was text or uh, notepad. Um, what does this do? Nothing. Okay. Um, you got paint. You know, if you want to start drawing stuff on paint, um, not exactly the most responsive. As you see when I'm flinging it around, it actually looks like there's a bunch of lines. It is not a vertical, or it's not a, um, uh, what do they call that? Um, it's a bitmap. It's not a vector base. So, um, very basic, very primitive. I mean, that th this has pretty much stayed on almost all version of uh, Windows, both uh, DOS-based and uh, um, NT-based. So let's go ahead and open this back up. I guess this opens up uh, two installations so if you try uh, doing MS-DOS. Yeah, if you keep opening it up, you can see like there's a whole bunch. Now, now if I can start expanding it, it'll start opening like different windows. Um, I guess they called it Windows, but... Uh, you used to be able to just drag this stuff to the side. There we go. Okay. So sometimes you can drag it off to the side and it'll snap. Um, you can't necessarily resize the uh, the windows manually. So it, it's it's primitive. But this was one of those systems where Microsoft tried to rush out as soon as possible because, you know, th there was competition. And Microsoft and Bill Gates being greedy... Uh, wanted a piece of that pie, so they rushed out something that was not exactly up to standards, but it existed, and I guess in the 80s you were able to get away with uh, crappy software. So, looking at the rest of this, there's the spooler, which is actually a printer feature, which is, um, this sticks around for basically all versions of Windows, except this one just kind of gets hidden in the background, but, um, a couple of fonts here. I guess there's a Roman font. Um, doesn't really uh, run all that great. Um, WRI format is, uh, I guess, the uh, Microsoft Writes format. Let's go ahead and close that. Um, this is a, this is just a text thing that I was uh, testing earlier just to make sure it works, and. Clock. Oh, there's clipboard. Sorry. So if you if you want to copy and paste stuff, why don't we try that real quick? Let's. Oh, hang on. If I can control this thing right. So let's try this. So let's hit Control C. Uh, that may not work in the virtual machine. So. Okay. So it's not Control C in Windows One. It's actually F two, which is even more confusing. Let's not save that. Let's see if it went to the clipboard. Yes, it did go to the clipboard. Okay, cool. So the clipboard works, barely. Um, we got some fonts. Let's do, I think I viewed the clock already. This sticks around for quite a bit as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and close that. Control panel, this will tell you just how basic this operating system is. Um, this is it. You got the cursor blink. You can control how fast or slow it is. You got your time. You got your date. Um, you got the double click. Uh, you can adjust how fast or slow your double clicking is. Um, and then you got screen colors, which unfortunately I do not have the color drivers installed on this uh, virtual machine. But uh, if I tried doing something, I'm sure it will crash. Um, mouse option, we can revert the buttons. 
set up communication port. So if you have like a COM port in the back of the computer, you can change the baud rate, you can change all this stuff. Um, that would more than likely can uh, talk with the terminal, but you may or may not have other programs that can run on this as well. So we'll go ahead and close the control panel. Let's see what else. I'm gonna close one of these instances as well. We'll just leave it to one. Um, card fire, or we got, uh, we did the calculator calendar I don't think we've done yet so this is supposed to be like a little uh, a scheduler thing I don't know if you can I would have to investigate what format this thing saves as um, so you can view the day you can view the month you can set alarms but that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and close that. Um, card file. Here's another one that's been kind of floating around. I never quite figured out how to get this one working. I don't know if... Okay, so you can, in theory, save these card files, but I don't know what they do. I don't know if they're just notes. I don't know if it was just some weird experiment that Microsoft tried to do and it lingered around as well, um, but that but that's there. MS-DOS, we, we know that it pops up the MS-DOS executive, which is basically, well, Windows. Uh, Paint, we already did. Notepad, we already did. You know, Notepad is just a basic uh, text editor. And see what else did this thing. Uh, WRI format is the writer format. Reversi. Okay, so we got Reversi, which is... I guess the game before uh, Microsoft uh, came out with a game. I'm not gonna even. I'm not gonna even bother with that. So spooler, that is a printer thing. Terminal is interesting because uh, the terminals don't didn't exactly go away. They're still around. They're not nearly as uh, popular as they were back in the day. Although nowadays most people use putty, um, p u t t y, which is um, it, it seems to be pretty. Uh, universal because with here um, seems like you're trying to connect to the phone but it doesn't give you a whole lot of options um, in regards to the connection itself versus putty where you can control the uh, the speed of the port because um, here you have to go back to the control panel which is here and then go to communications port that's how you control your baud rate your uh, com port um, word length, I think this is in bits, uh, parity, blah, blah, blah. Not going to go into details because that is a different system that we're going to look into maybe another time. Um, win.com just opens this up again. So you notice how it just kind of throws everything here. Um, write.exe, we already took a look at this. It's basically a document editor. And this is it. This is really it. Um, PIF. I'm not exactly sure what this is. But. Oh, this is Lotus 1, 2, 3. Um, looks like uh, sample documents for Lotus 1, 2, 3. Which I don't believe I have the disk for currently. So that will be um, maybe a video for another time. So could switch to different drives. I don't have anything in drive A and B anymore because uh, um, I pulled it out so this thing can actually boot. But I don't know how to... There we go, okay. 
So if you want to go back into the root directory, you have to click on this. And then you're able to browse the different uh, um, folders. But if you want to go back, you got to click up here. And then you could put a file path on here. So I can open Windows and it'll be back here. But this is it. This is literally Windows. It's rather primitive. It looks ugly. And it's very unstable. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and attempt to continue this project. I know it's kind of a hit or miss whether I can actually make a video or not. But uh, if you have any suggestions on how I can record these videos differently, please leave in the comments section below. Um, I will be uploading these videos to Rumble from now on. I'll try to make a copy onto um, YouTube just so people can actually uh, see them on YouTube if they don't if they don't have access to Rumble. But um, yeah, YouTube I've been having some problems with, so I want to make sure I have a backup copy of everything. Um, so if you have if you're on Rumble, please subscribe. Um, I don't care about YouTube because they're going to monetize without me having uh, money anyways. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching.